Yeah. <laughs> Well, we told you a little bit about our guest and you you know why we wanted her on the show, but we're going to tell you a little bit more about her. Her name her name is Tamara Flug. And we love saying that, so we're going to say it. Tamara Flug is your go-to guide for silencing that inner critic and regaining control over your life. If you've ever felt frustrated, stuck, or plagued by self-doubt, we all have. Tamara gets it and she's here to help. With a warm and empathetic approach, she empowers you to overcome feelings of being unloved or misunderstood. Her mantra, nothing can bring you peace but yourself, encapsulates her belief in personal responsibility and the power of self-choice. When she's not guiding others to self-discovery or empowerment, you'll find Tamara savoring chocolate or immersing herself in personal development literature. Tamara, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. And I couldn't have sold myself better than what you did. So thank you again. It's amazing. I hire you for PR. You know? Okay. There we go. And let me just break. Flug. I had to say it one more time just for practice. Amazing. You said it better than I did again. Oh. <laughs> My dad would be very proud. Oh. Well, we talked a little bit before you got on here that we're, uh, our last name is German as well. But um, so, but still, I, when I remember seeing it and going, oh my gosh, how are we going to say that? And so we did cheat and look it up. How do you say it? It's so. got a fun sound to it. Mm -hmm. that, isn't, it sounds like something you you drink out of. Flu. Yeah, oh. exactly. No, for sure. I think the PFL that is next to three consoles, it's people that I cannot get over. Yeah. Like, it's so hard. <laughs> no, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, we like to paint a picture for our listeners and those who are watching on YouTube as to where you are. So would you please share where you're coming to us from today? Yes. So I'm originally, as you can hear, <laughs> I'm originally from Geneva, Switzerland. So I do speak French. My mother tongue is French. And yeah, this is why I have uh, this accent <laughs> for you guys today. And we are really proud of having our own French, which is a little bit different than French French. But yeah, I guess it's still French. <laughs> okay. Okay. So when you go to France, are you, and you speak, I mean, are there just like different dialect things that you have, you can't pick up or, or do you know it? Like it's just fluent? Or is no, it... we, we do speak exactly like, like the same. It's still the same French, but we okay. have kind of, it's like we're singing a bit people from Geneva. So people oh. can notice that we have an accent and we can, we know, you know, accent from South of France is different mm -hmm. from Paris, it's a bit different, and Ke Quebec, like from Montreal, it's yeah. also a completely different French. But no, no, I'm exaggerating. It's still the same, like a slang, okay. the same expressions. It's on all okay. we have Swiss expressions, but yeah, generally okay, I'm gotcha. exaggerating. We just like we are very proud Swiss, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we appreciate it. We know time is valuable, and there's a big time difference. So we appreciate you taking Thank the time you. to spend it with us today. Well, okay. So I we have tons of questions because we we talk about on here a lot about that inner critic, the inner uh, dialogue that we have with ourselves. And we've talked before about how we try to point it out for each other because it's sometimes it's hard to see, like even, you know, we'll drop something from the cabinet. And go, oh my gosh, you're so stupid, Shannon, or yeah. you know, whatever. And then the other one will say, okay, ease up. Like that's a little, <laughs> it's a little harsh, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing about the small things, but other things can be bigger. And so I think everyone can sort of relate to that inner dialogue. So before we kind of get into how you help people and some of the advice you have, how did you get into this? Like, how did you get into this line yeah, of work? I love that question. So, you know, I used to be a teacher. So at school, kids were so amazing, you know, so authentic, simple, like uh, really like kids. And um, then actually I saw how much in our life, you know, we could learn so much more about making decisions, improving our relationship, you know, not taking things too personally, giving to other people our emotional life, like you take care of it, I don't want to do it. So I started to be interested in personal development, seeing what we are missing, you know, in like what I can see with my friends, like adults' life, but at school also what I wanted to teach them instead of what I was actually teaching them, which is interesting, but I think like making decisions and yeah, all of it, it's just to me, so much more important, I guess, you know, to make like happy kids make happy adults, you know. Um. So then I started to learn life coaching and I started coaching people, but more, you know, on time management, weight loss, a lot on dating also. <laughs> there was a time a lot on dating. And I saw that deep down, it very often come down to self-worth, you know, like giving ourselves permission to believe something like about ourselves. Again, on dating, time management, like having our own back. And then I decided, yeah, actually, I used to struggle a lot with confidence. I got coached a lot. And yeah, I really, 
I decided I'm going to dive into confidence, help people, because I do believe that when we feel confident, it impacts everything in our life because we feel this genuine emotional peace and freedom that adversity, like what people say, what's happening in the world, it's, it can happen, but you're still in control, you know, because I believe mm -hmm. confidence is really about like having our emotions under control, like being able to feel and the willingness of having any, feeling any kind of emotion. So I became the confidence coach and I added the fun tagline because I think that we take life, uh, life and ourselves so seriously and we can yes. for sure have a much more uncomplicated life. So this is why I added. And you would be surprised how much people want much more fun in their life. It's crazy. I did not know. Oh. And actually people come more for the fun than for the confidence lately. <laughs> well, well, I got to think they work together too, fun and confidence. Uh, yeah? You know, you, yeah, you got to be having a little fun to probably stay mm -hmm. confident. If, if you're not having fun, you you it seems like it would be harder to, to keep your confidence up. Yeah. And I also think, you know, you can use exactly what you said from before, you know, when your inner critic is saying, you're like, what are you doing? I also think that we can use everything as a way to or beat ourselves up, which I'm not for this. I don't see any upsides or an opportunity to love ourselves more and to exactly what you just said. I think Jerry like to yeah, just have much more fun. Like, ah, I did this. You know, funny, funny guy, you know, and just move on, you know. It doesn't have to be so serious. The problem is never, you know, what we're thinking. It's what we make it mean. Like, I'm a stupid person, you know. It doesn't yeah. have to be so serious, you know. So, yeah, exactly what you said, Jerry. I oh. think it's just together. I like it. That's, that's so true. I, you yeah. know, when I when I look at the word confidence, even even though, like, your tagline right here says, Tamara, you're fun and confidence coach. When I, when I see the word confidence, I always, in my mind, think, it's something I'm working. Oh, I have to work on it. So it, mm. for me, it's a little intimidating. I don't know if it's like that for you. I think so. And that's where that helps to add the fun and in that's front what of I the was, confidence. That's it's exactly like, what I was oh, thinking. Oh, let's dig in. This is, yeah, this uh -huh. is going to be fun too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you think that most people are are constantly working on their confidence or do you, is that just a, is it just us? <laughs> <laughs> just as just the three of us, I'm telling you. <laughs> so no, I believe what is interesting is that confidence, and it goes a bit the idea, you know, personal development, which um, I love, and at the same time, it's a bit take the best and leave the rest. You know, it's like the life coaching industry. I like that it's unregulated, so you can, as long as you help people and people get results, you can have the certification you want. You know, people have tons of certification and no clients. People just know they can help, and it attracts people, you know, to get the help. So I believe that it's a bit. Um, accent like intangible you know i want to yeah. be confident so it's yep. for example for marketing reason it's better to think of what somebody who's struggling with self-doubt is feeling on a on a tuesday afternoon you know at 3 p.m just to be very specific yeah but it is true that i think people would want a little bit more confidence if you really like start talking even if um, yeah people get vulnerable you know because by thinking that they want to feel more confident it means a bit that they're lacking it, you know, that they feel self-doubt, that they don't trust or like love themselves. So for sure, you know, when you share it, I don't think people will share it like on a daily, day-to-day -day life. You know, I think it's more yeah. between friends, but it's interesting what you said about what confidence means to you if it's, you know, work or something very important and very serious because uh, with clients, when I started, um, like we always talk about what is like being confident to them, you know, specifically to their life, because it's so different from people, you know, like it's, yeah. so yeah, to answer your question, I think that people would like, if they could buy it on a shelf in a store, they would buy more confidence, but yeah. it's true that it's, the first question is in what situation actually they want to be more confident in, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. I think it, when you talk about it being intangible, it's sort of the way I look at uh, happiness. I To me, happiness is so, um, I don't know. It just seems like such a, is that real? Like, is, or should we just be content? <laughs> like, yeah. So, so it sort of reminds me of that, that similar happiness is so high. And then confidence to me looks so high up on a ladder that it's like both of them, I, I'm working to get there. And yeah, it's kind of a complex dynamic. It, there's just so much involved and it comes down to the individual. So uh, yeah, yeah, but but fun still makes it for me like oh okay maybe that is tangible maybe it is something that we yeah. can we can get to. <laughs> but look, I would look actually just to enter into the <laughs> the meat. I would say that it's not as complicated as we make it mean. I think like just to enter <laughs> into make a small debate here. I believe yeah. that it can be much more simple than this. Like for example, my coaching, I based I love the idea of um, I don't know if you're familiar with cognitive 
behavioral therapy that is yeah. basically saying that your thoughts create your reality. And what if I like to think that it's like coaching all of personal development, it's very simple. Like there are a few steps, like a few things to do, but it's right. It's not easy, you know, because it comes down to also feeling your emotions, like being uncomfortable, which most of the time, you know, <laughs> you're an entrepreneur, like, you know, you don't want to do something because you don't want to feel bad, you know, like when they get yeah. emotion. So what I'm saying by this is like, I believe that also feeling happy, you know, to just like a simple thing in life, like to enjoy the sleep, little things, it comes from just one thought we're thinking, it creates one emotion. I believe that our emotions come from what we're thinking. So if we want to feel confident, it actually goes back to thinking one thought, such as, yeah, maybe I can do that. And you feel confident. It sounds very simple again, but I think that if you want to feel happy, I don't know, maybe you guys, it's just like being uh, with your dog, you know, and going out. Yeah. To eat not because I love eating, but I mean yeah. any other example. But then it can be that simple. So it is complex. I agree that it's um, like many things are maybe entering the equation, and at the same time I like to keep it, you know, back to simple, which the with the idea of making it uncomplicated. That maybe if you think one thought, of course we have to believe it to be true, but then you can feel happy in that moment, you know, and then we don't need to get somewhere or get something to feel this way, but we can create it in our mind. Yeah. That convince you, you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you did, you did, <laughs> no, yeah, I like that. And happiness, you want to think it's a choice, right? Like, yeah, of yeah. one of us, and yeah. you know, that confidence. I wanted to also that I hear, um, heard this one time on the on a podcast, I don't remember, a long time ago. Somebody said that confidence or like feeling worthy is it's a decision and not a destination, which means that there's somebody, and I used to do it, I have to be a product of my product, but I said to myself, I am never from this day on, I am never beating myself up again. Like if I have a thought, it's okay because we have 60,000 60, thoughts per day, but I don't have to believe it to be true. Like if I think, for example, I'm maybe not good enough, or I'm not going to succeed at this, it's just a thought. As, and I saw your question, like there was one that um, asked, we are not our thoughts. And I really believe this. So I catch my brain and I see I, it's just a thought, just seeing it for what it is. And I'm never like letting myself, uh, beating myself up. So just to say exactly what you said, Jerry, I think it's also a decision to, you know, to really like, yeah, think on purpose, to think intentionally. Again, it goes back to what you're thinking, create what you're feeling, I believe. But Shannon, you are saying something, so if you remember. Well, no, it, I, I, yeah, I do. I, it, it's exactly that. Like how, do you have any, <clears throat> it is your thoughts, right? We do have all those <laughs> thoughts. And, and I'm, I, as you're, as you're saying it and pointing it out, I'm thinking, about the things that I do have the thoughts of in the mornings. And I, I, sometimes I can catch it. Sometimes I reroute it and say, Oh, Shannon, you know, why are you thinking that? Let's turn that into more of a positive. But I feel like as the day goes on or the more things that are going on in your life, at least for me, speak for myself, it is more difficult to turn the thoughts. I guess I, I just want to say what, what, what strategies or what, if you could just give people tips about, they, they recognize, I guess the first thing would be to recognize it, but then mm -hmm. recognize that those negative thoughts can come up. So what do you do? Do you just immediately say, well, okay, catch it and then turn it around into a positive? I would say that you don't even have to turn it around like right away. I think that the very first thing it's, and I love thinking this, it's, you know, our brain is still the brain from the cave people, you know, like cavemen. So mm -hmm. it's just looking for danger and survival all the time. So this is why 85% yeah. of our thoughts um, like every day it's going to be negative because it's looking for danger. This is why everybody, you know, we don't want to look at the ambulance, but we do want to look for danger because our brain is like saying, is it me? Am I going to be hurt? Like, get, yeah. I get, I'm going to get hurt. And I think just to remind myself, oh, of course, this is the negative. I think it's a cognitive bias now that um, looking for the negative really. So 85% of what we're thinking is going to be negative just because we have a perfect healthy brain, you know? So this is the first step to think, ah, I'm normal because obviously when we, think negative we're like but i'm not a negative person i'm trying to be optimistic you know like positive so i think the very first step is and this is what i like also about coaching is reminding ourselves you know every day that it's 85 percent of our thoughts are going to be negative 95 percent of what we're thinking is what we we thought already yesterday which again if we believe the fact that our thoughts create our reality this is why we have the same reality because we keep on thinking the same thoughts unconsciously this is what coaching is all about i love it's paying attention to what we're thinking and it's very empowering because if we want anything to be different the only thing that has to change only <laughs> simple again the <laughs> only thing that has to change is what we're thinking so it's very very empowering I, I love this idea so to answer your question very simple again 
it's exactly like to observe exactly to to be conscious of what we're thinking and to observe it for what it is like it's a thought we have 60,000 thoughts per day which 85% are going to be negative and yeah to not believe everything we're thinking but mm -hmm. this is a step it's it's not simple really but it's most of the people will die believing everything they're thinking you know but the moment that you know I have a thought maybe it's not true I don't know it's I love it so yeah tell me what you guys think. <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking how I'm just sitting here thinking how I when I, when I'm thinking about anything and this this is also going to just tell you a lot about me I <laughs> always plan for the worst I'm like mm. what's the worst thing that's going to happen here okay plan for that because then maybe you'll be able to handle whatever else happens but then I feel like as though I'm living in constant fear and so mm. you almost saying that that maybe maybe that's normal <laughs> but yes. but i do need to work on because i i do feel like i go into things with fear i say it all the time i wish i wasn't so fearful and it's not fearful of doing something it's fearful of what is coming it's like this pending fear and i know that the the thoughts in my head you know are their their emotions and 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 then it transfers into this fear and and so it becomes like this spiral and and I'm always working towards it. So I, I like that you said it's normal, but I also am like I need to I need to figure out a way to get out of that. Like to you know I mean how do you do that if you if it is normal to say oh, okay there's ambulance let me make sure it's not me like protecting yourself constantly it, in a way like with what I'm describing does seem harmful and negative right. <laughs> Maybe, but I think also fear. I think there is something good about fear. I think it's your brain that just wants to make uh, sure you're going to be safe. So also because I like also, and of course not giving unsolicited coaching because I don't do this. I hate when people do this with me, so I'm not doing it. But concerning what I just said, when you say, you know, I'm a fearful person. Like I wonder how, you know, what reality you create for yourself when you have thoughts of like that makes you like create fear for you but you are not like a fearful person but this is how you describe yeah. yourself you know what i'm talking about it's just interesting because probably you feel fear because of some thoughts you're thinking and you believe them to be true you know so just but don't need to <laughs> coach you here through this but it just i, I find it uh, interesting and also to um i would ask you also what if fear is not a problem you can also you know people feel anxious um anxiety like every like day and they still have a wonderful life so you can also live and i see so your page and your website and you get seems like you have a wonderful life so you can also oh. live an amazing life while feeling fearful so it's just interesting to make it mean it you it's know that something that i really like it's um never something we're thinking that is a problem but what we make it mean you know so maybe having all of these fears or having thoughts and believing like thinking of the worst case scenario doesn't look like it's a problem until you think that supposed to be different you know what i mean that you're not supposed to have these fears thinking that maybe other people don't have fears i wonder what are the other thoughts but of course no analyze and nothing has to be fixed you know for you nothing's wrong with yeah. you but i find it so interesting i, I agree it's uh, fascinating yeah well i always think that uh you know that love and fear are the two most motivating uh emotions and i i don't know if this is a good analogy but i always like it liken it to you know it's good to have a fearful mindset you really need that. If you step out in front of the a, a bus, you know, love isn't going to save you. You, <laughs> you can't sit there and go, no, maybe, maybe this won't be so bad. You know, you got to be fearful and move back really quick, right? <laughs> this is how you so, see that you found each other, you know, because it's bringing you, you know, probably the peace and the, the quiet or on the fear yeah. for you, you know, like. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. definitely. Yeah. definitely. Yeah. But it's true that the emotion, you know, also it's part of I love, you know, I'm so passionate about emotions because I believe there is such a big buffet of all the emotions like available, you know, to us. And uh, yeah, it's just so fun. Like you mentioned fear, but I think it's one of many others we we feel, you know, so I just, uh, yeah. It's interesting what you said, love or fear. I, yeah. You know that yeah. people motivate themselves a lot also with hate. This is why, you know, when it comes to confidence, people think that they have, you know, to, they're afraid, you know, for example, I like to set goals from a place of abundance, you know, like I'm good where I am right now, but I just want something else. Oh, I want to lose weight. I don't know, just for the fun again. But people think that they are afraid, you know, if they don't hate themselves, they're going to get deeper, like fatter. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know. So it's just interesting to, I think I would say when you say fear or love um, to motivate change, I would say even like people use a lot of hate and, you know, um, self, uh, 
say that self talk no like self you know beating yourself up to make sure you, you like make deprecation self deprecation yeah. Yeah. yeah but i went to another direction but it's interesting no it is and and yeah. i i read you know you often remind your clients that you're not your thoughts you're not your emotions but do you feel as though you should allow them to still happen but then tell yourself like if i'm scared what well, doesn't mean i'm or or fearful i'm not a fearful person that like you know, um, I, I feel like I'm out of my mind today. Oh my gosh, I feel so stressed, but maybe that's not who I am. It's just what I'm feeling. Right? Yes, yeah. exactly. And it's, you know, from like, when it comes to confidence, people like self doubt most of the time for my, for marketing reasons, people come like really have the thoughts such as, um, like have thoughts such as something wrong with me or I'm different. And it's not because we think this, that, it's the truth. It's not because we think something's wrong with me that something is wrong with me. I think everybody thinks something's wrong with them. <laughs> so in the end, we are all like, yeah, but thanks to you guys and our podcast and our lifestyle, we can show people to think and to live differently. But I mean, you know, right. like it's yeah. really, <laughs> I believe really that, yeah, we are not our thoughts. It's not because we believe something that um, that it's true. We can look at cloud um, as thoughts, like clouds that are passing in the sky, you know, you can just let them pass and it's a habit you know you don't have to to hang to them like to believe mm. to live their, your life like attaching to them but at the same time we will every day have thoughts again the same from yesterday a lot and five percent new ones and if you train your brain more and more you can believe something new but it is i'm not saying it's it's work but i agree it's uh, it's complex notice i have to say it's it's simple but again it's not easy to do you know yeah yeah yeah. When you're working with a client, do you, is there something that you start with? Like, is there, is there something that you say, okay, this is your first step? Like anything that, I mean, you know, I know you have your coaching, but is there, is there a tip that you can say to someone who's listening? Just if, if you can do one thing, work on this one thing, what would it be? Yeah, I would just to make it uh, like a puzzle, like to fit with the piece from before, just to really try to observe yourself thinking, to go out of your body. Really, I think it's that simple, like simple. Again, very simple and not easy to do because we believe our stories. We are really defending them, you know. Yeah. But I like to explain this. This is also very often what I um, start my coaching sessions with. Is saying that in the world, there are really two things, like the, probably many more, but for the, <laughs> this example, one, you have the facts that like circumstances that are very neutral, such as your age, uh, my hate, my nationality, like it's something that would be proven in the court of law, I guess, most of the world. And on the other side, we have our thoughts, which like um, circumstances trigger our thoughts. And again, then our thoughts create, you know, our reality. But what is interesting with this is this is why, you know, in for the same event, like for example, now this podcast recording, we will have maybe different thoughts about the same event. So this is where our power resides, I think, for coaching. It's really that no matter what's happening in the world, the fact, the circumstances, we can always choose intentionally what we want mm -hmm. to think about them, you know, and then mm -hmm. it changed completely all your life, which really explained that with the same circumstances again, or even like chronic illness, like things that are very hard for many people. Some people deal with it differently, you know, because they choose intentionally to think something different about mm -hmm. it. But first you have to be conscious of what you're thinking, which very often we blame others in the world for the way we're feeling. But now you know that it's our thoughts that create our emotion. So we are responsible because, you know, it's never the circumstance. It's what we think. You know? And how we react to it. Yeah. This is right after. I believe that just to keep it um, organized for me when I'm coaching also people to have a bit of a tool, you know, to <laughs> help for credibility. Now, just to organize it, it just after from emotion, actually, we act a certain way or we don't act because we feel dread. We don't want to go to the gym in the non-action line. And then this create a result. And very often, I can send it to you later if you want. It's really cognitive behavioral therapy. That's very, very often our reality mirrors or um, like creates evidence for what we're thinking. You know, so no right. matter what we're thinking, will create results. And um, oh, also okay. what you said before of um, I'm fearful. Again, you're not your thought. But what is interesting is also cognitive bias. I think that the brain will look for evidence. Uh, and proof for everything we think oh. it cannot reinvent the wheel every day so for think you like <laughs> no for example i said like i'm gonna be hungry soon my brain's telling me maybe you should eat this maybe you should eat that you know and i'm not hungry so just just interesting how the brain yes. just because it's efficient we look for proof and evidence of everything we think so again if you think to go back to your question of observe ourselves just to give one tip if we think uh, maybe i'm not good enough i can assure you the brain is so efficient it's gonna find all the reason why like you're not good enough not today. Good enough. Yesterday, yeah. 
past, like don't get me started on the past because you will find evidence. I think also it's just easier to beat ourselves up and to hate ourselves than to love ourselves. We never learn, you know, like when you ask people what do you like in life, they never mention themselves, you know, like it's many things. Oh, like it's that's strong. true. <laughs> that's so true. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's, it's not easy to go. I think the brain is wired for certain, like, yeah, it's efficient, but we need to rewire re -wire the brain. You know? I yeah. Guess. Do you, Sounds do you, fun. Do you think in uh, Do you think in modern life? Because it was kind of coming down to is like mindfulness. You know, watching what's going through your head, and in modern life, there's just so much stimulation to keep your mind working out there. There's the media, media, and and whatnot, and a faster pace culture does not give your mind as much time to slow down, where you can really process your thoughts and and step back, like you're saying, and look at them. So it seems like nowadays that's. That's why mindfulness is kind of a buzzword be mm. these days because people have had to learn to cope with the faster paced society and all the stimulation that comes in. Does yeah, that make sense? Um, yeah, you know, for sure. And yeah. I think that at the same time, after it's still, it's stronger than us because you have the phone and I'm doing kind of something that is called um, positive intelligence. It's a new strategy that is uh, very interesting to stop. Um, not digging into this, but just to say, um, and it's exactly, and I have two minutes, just two minutes of exactly like trying to focus on one thing specifically. And I, you know, when you said that, it made me think of this. I was doing it, like trying to focus two minutes. What what are two minutes, you know? And I was thinking, yeah. I need to do this after, I need to do that. And I'm supposed, I want to be a billboard for coaching, you know, and for peacefulness. And I was getting stressed for two minutes. So I agree with you. And then it's still a neutral circumstance. We have to override our brain. Like, I mean, mindfulness or like, all the notification on the phone, everything, we do have to make a choice. No, right now, like having the thought, I'm focusing on this. That's right. Doing... But I agree that yeah. the mindfulness, it's true. It's his. very in, like my dad is saying, he's in his 80s and he says, what is this stuff? You know, we never had this in the past. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think that sort of, it's, when you talked about the fast paced world and the way that people think about, um, you know, their careers or their lives and, and, um, you know, we, we work hard. It's a work in progress to make sure that we have that separate time that is not work and that we're enjoying whatever it is that we want to be enjoying. So what advice do you have for people who have a struggle with breaking those two up? Because a lot of the times your work, your workplace is somewhere that you're you might not be thinking about working on yourself, or maybe you are, maybe you're, you're trying to get those tasks done and people struggle with the division and the balance. So what what advice do you have about that as far as having self-confidence, but also struggling with that? I don't know. I, I always think of it like a ladder. I think people are always trying to have more success, more success. And what does that mean? And we can get into a whole podcast about that. But what advice do you have for people who are struggling with like a work-life balance and then confidence as well? Yeah. And it's so interesting because when I saw a question, work life balance i said to myself am i gonna just answer something that uh, i i deeply i really think of or maybe i'm gonna just like say something um not normal but my thought about first work life balance i'm not saying i don't believe in it because i do struggle a bit with it i just think that sometimes the way we use it to look at our work and like life and having fun makes it serious again that it's mm -hmm. when i'm working it's not fun and i need to do things which i have to say editing stuff or i i just procrastinate because I don't want to do it I, I really don't like it and yeah. at the same time by looking at it this way with work-life balance I do believe that and maybe you guys are on my side thinking that you choose kind of what the work you're doing even if it's annoying a lot like percentage yeah. of the time but I do believe that when we think work-life balance I'm a bit uh, thinking that it's then work sounds like bad and life is like the fun moment of the week you know so then it looks like we're working hard which uh, I like that you mentioned the busy because I have lots of opinion about, you know, there is a badge of honor for being busy today. You know, people like yeah. to say they're busy, which nothing mm -hmm. wrong. Everybody says it. And I like, yeah, today I worked good. I was like, I was very really busy. But yeah, I think what I'm, <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is just, yeah, I'm sure that we can still find fun and purpose in what we do, you know, no matter what work we do. And if people don't feel this way, maybe we can change or not also as long as we love our reasons. And to answer your question, <laughs> it sounds very vague. Um, yeah, I would say exactly like to try to separate it like as much as, uh, as like, yeah, like what I heard from one of my um, coaching certification was to first plan your free time, 
in your calendar and mm. then your work because often when we do work and then you know you make like something that is that could be done in 45 minutes it takes three hours it's yeah. because we don't know when we are really end uh, like finishing work because mm -hmm. if you're like me we work a lot at night also sometimes yeah. you know on Saturday afternoon, yep. you know, yeah. a Saturday morning, I was going to say for you guys. So <laughs> I think this is, yeah, just to give maybe this tip. Sorry, got a bit uh, no, excited. No, it's all right. I think yeah. really the first thing is really to plan to the fun thing, which can be even 15 minutes, half an hour per day. And then the work task that uh, I believe also not to measure it in amount of work, like uh, hours, but of results. You know, because yeah. you can spend two hours, you guys probably know as... I said yeah. everybody, but you can work two hours on something and you know it could have, like, take you maybe half an hour to do it. Which the yeah. rule here is B minus work. It's better to make it done, like B minus, than not done at all. So I think it's more how much time do I give myself for, like, to do this task and then to get over with. Yeah. I, th I think the mm -hmm. most common theme that has come out of all of your answers today is fun. <laughs> Like fun. <laughs> Every time you say it, I'm just like, yeah, that's great. That's great. And yeah. I also love that you talked about earlier, and I do think we agree with this, that um, to be, to not follow in the norm is actually good. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I think when we, you know, we have a lot of lifestyle choices that people don't understand. We talked about this before we started recording and even, even, you know, living small and with less stuff, it's not the norm. But we are at the point now where we we really don't care what people think about yeah. that. It just it makes us feel good, and so that's what we're gonna do as long as we're not hurting someone. I think we're good. Exactly. It's funny you said it. It's exactly what I think. But I'm not hurting anybody. You know, it's exactly right. what I'm saying. Yeah. But I, I I'm th I'm sitting here with with that. If I'm like if I'm that way, then why why don't I implement that the more positive into other things? And so I, I like that you, Jerry. You brought up the mindfulness and um before we get to your fast five questions, I wanted to see, do you, when you work with your um, clients, do you have different mindfulness exercises or, or routines that you advise people to have in place? And could you recommend one to our listeners? Yeah, I think I'm not sure if it's too much uh, mindfulness. It looks like Jerry is uh, the expert here, but I would <laughs> say just uh, for me, the, it's not really mindful, but it's just to take time to celebrate more to, you know, what yesterday went well, even just last week, which is very easy. You know, there is a book called The Gap and the Gain. He says we focus so much on the gap, you know, between uh, what we want to do, uh, um, like what we're going to get. And actually, we don't see all of what we gain, like who we were a year ago, who we were 10 years ago, you know. And I think just to, it's I'm not sure it's mindfulness, but for sure it helps to see, you know, celebrate even one thing per day that, yeah, we like the way we did it or something that happens. So, to answer a question, like coaching se uh, sessions, I always start with like celebrations of the week. And it's mm. at the start, it's so hard. We don't, we never learn, you know, really to celebrate uh, what yeah. we did or even catching a thought. So my clients are like looking in their notes and I see them celebration. Like they don't want to do it because at first you sound arrogant, you know, because why me celebrating you know but i think it's a good habit but oh, it's, just like my that. Habit. it's like a, well, it's like a gratitude practice but yeah. i almost yeah, like exactly. celebration better yeah. you know yeah. and sometimes yeah. it is hard to find like we we believe in a gratitude practice and finding that thing that you're grateful for and sometimes it's breathing sometimes it's that yeah. the sun is out uh, but i do like the celebration part well, that well, makes it more fun yeah i do too and, <laughs> and you know we we go over a lot of these themes very often in a lot of our podcasts in our everyday life yeah. but to make the, my takeaway from uh, today's conversation will be that fun and celebration was yeah. kind of in the forefront because we don't plan our fun first. We try to mm -hmm. squeeze it in later. And sometimes it never comes and you get really, you can really grind, grind, grind yourself down that way. So you got to have yeah. something to at least look forward to or so right. whether it's the day, the weekend or. And that I will tell you also this, um, I also think that as much as fun is, you know, for the weekend, for you guys doing tonight and tomorrow and with your dog and everything. I also believe that every task, not everything again, the editing, I'm, I'm trying to find the fun and it's not easy, <laughs> but try really to, I think the quality of our life depends also on the quality of the questions you ask yourself, because again, your brain will answer to any question you ask. So what's wrong with me? It is going to tell you what's wrong with you, you know? <laughs> so I think that if you ask for tasks, for example, before we talked about walking, which again, sounds like, there is life, which is fun. And there is work on the other side. And I'm like fighting for the fun in the work, like you said, Jerry. And I'm wondering if we can also start a task for work. And I've been doing this um, on my Instagram recently, trying to imitate your success, you guys on Instagram. And I asked myself, like, what 
how can I make it fun? How can I make it my way? What would I want to see on Instagram if I would, you know, what would be helpful to one person? But really, how can I make it fun? I think that um, fun sometimes sounds like it's not serious. And I strongly believe now we live in the best time ever with also COVID and everything. People yeah. want more fun. People want connection. They want to, yeah, the the thing that really matter in life, it's, not saying it's fun. Not everybody has this value. And I am all about silliness and fun. But I think just a little bit more. I think it's coming from um, the idea of light, you know, like lighthearted. And it's yes. awesome that I really want to share with you guys that um, you can also do it. It's a great exercise for any person that has a job, actually, to write in what ways we um, help people have a better life. Even if it's not, even no matter what kind of job it is. And there is one, um, I made a list of 131 uh, ways that uh, coaching helps my client change their life because they change their life. I just help them. And the first one was to have a lighthearted attitude towards life, you know, to less take things mm. so heavy, you know, so seriously. And yeah, even my face was very serious, but I think <laughs> this is, a, imagine if we can buy this on a shelf, you know, for a life, I would be like, yeah, yeah I'm taking $5,000 to take things less seriously and have a lighthearted attitude. I'm, you know, so, yes. <laughs> Oh, God. You cannot stop me. You understand why I have a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get into your fast five questions. These are just this or that. Um, little little fun. Now, the, <laughs> like, the, even the first one, I'm like, oh, maybe we should have made that more fun. But um, <laughs> don't, worry. don't be just yeah. like, oh, yeah, here we go. Like, why exactly. am I? I'm already, like, being negative about myself. No, like, it's, it's your out, brain. You know? It's not you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right. Number okay. five is always fun. So that's why it's fun <gasps> to be curious. the one who reads number one. Okay, go ahead. You want to read number one? Then you get to read number five. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'll start it off. Then here we go. Social media detox or TV detox? Detox. Social media detox. Uh -huh. Okay, number two, physical exercise or mindfulness meditation? Mindfulness. No moving. Uh, okay. Once again, I get another fun one. Blueberries or strawberries? Tough one. <laughs> strawberries. Okay. Uh, that is the fun, more fun We did choice. a little research, which is why we, we asked <laughs> that. Yeah, across we, the board. We know you love all is... berries. It so was really hard. Have... I, mean, <laughs> I agree. Blueberries can be fun, but they're oh, never as fun as strawberries. No, I think strawberries. <laughs> and strawberries are so versatile. You can just do so much with them. And, yeah. the and they look so probably. weird with the little dots. Like, just doesn't matter. <laughs> <have to do. laughs> <laughs> okay, number four. Oh, is it my turn? It is. Okay, number four. Dining out or chef cooking for you at home? <gasps> <laughs> oh, you read my my answers. Huh? No, I think dining out because I don't want the smell at home. Oh, no. yeah. And the mess. Like, who's going to clean it? And then you're going to feel the pressure about the it. And the <laughs> chef cannot be good at chef or cleaning. It's not, doesn't make sense. That's true. That's true. <laughs> okay. And the much anticipated number five is ketchup or mustard. Ah, ketchup all the way. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. You too, guys? Well, you probably already mm. answered that. Well, I'm a mixture of, I, I'm, I, there's only been maybe one other person on the podcast that's ever answered it this way, but I like putting them together. I like mm. having them together. But and, well, I like, I like both. They each have their place, but I do like mustards probably a little better because there's different kinds. I like, I like the basic yellow mustard. I like the <laughs> spicy. I love uh gray coupon, you know, whatever you call that. Uh, what is that kind of mustard? Um, I don't know. Fancy mustard. Yeah. I don't know. She doesn't like fancy. I don't like mustard. the fancy mustard. I just want yellow mustard. I don't need all the other fancy stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, Dijon mustard. Dijon. That's what, yeah, ah, that's Dijon. Yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> he, loves, he loves the Dijon. Yeah. He said so it's that, really good. I, I mustard edges that a little bit for me because there's different options. Yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. But mm -hmm. we say one day we're going to do a like a Venn diagram to see what, what are the common people that choose. Yeah. We, like we a chart, you know, like seeing how much. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. I just thought of yeah. hot dog and then I had to add ketchup. This is why. I mean, so. Yeah, that, I'm that way too. A lot of people don't believe in that, but I think ketchup needs to go on a hot dog with mustard though. But no, anyway, but okay. <laughs> okay. So the question that we do ask everyone and Tamara, we would love it if you could answer it is what does a life well lived mean to you? Deep stuff. Uh, I would say, <laughs> I would really say again, yeah, exactly. No, I would say to just exactly like not take it chill, but just a life that you truly yeah, you're truly proud that you made your own choice. You guys would probably follow me on this. You did not hurt anybody, but like you, you just did what 
your intuition. I'm all about the intuition. Every question you have, stop asking outside, outside of recipe probably, and listen to on the inside. I'm sure we have all the answers inside of us. But so just to, yeah, take it, take it, probably it's translated on the French, I apologize, but like chill to relax and to not take it too serious and yeah, to really listen to your, to your intuition and do whatever you want, as long as we don't hurt anybody. I think this is a, the best way you can look at your life when you die as old as possible and just be, be proud of every choice you made. There was no right or wrong choice. You just made it because you loved the, your reasons at that time. This is it. Mm, it's very. Uh, you like? What's the, what's the French? Uh, for, there's a French <laughs> term about just living your. Um, oh, what is it? Bon appétit. Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> like a joy of life thing. Like a. Um, I don't know. C'est la vie, French. No, no kind of, but oh, no. There's good. a there's a there's a term that's kind of like live your life like just just enjoy your life and I really want to know. know probably I know it for sure but I, I'm know. gonna find it and I'll end up I'll end up putting it down in the show notes and I'll I'll send you an email about it I feel like it was a song title at one time I don't know I don't know anyway okay well we, we went on about yeah. that well I, okay so Tamara if someone's listening to this and they are like I really want to start uh building my confidence and have more fun in life and with my thoughts and they want to work with you how do they get in touch with you? Let's tell everybody about your podcast and just all the ways that we can find you. And we're going to link it all down in the show notes. Thank you so much. This is so nice of you guys. I feel already honored. So um, yeah, actually you can find me on my website is personaldevelopmentzone.com. I believe years ago and I've decided, yeah, it's, it's going to be good enough, you know. Yeah. Anyway, and uh, yeah, I have a Instagram also, Fun and Confidence Coach. No, I think it's Tamara, Fun and Confidence Coach. And I'm on LinkedIn also. But yeah, you can find me also on Google Maps. You would be surprised, guys, like on Google Maps. It's also a nice place to be. <laughs> it's the future. <laughs> and uh, yeah, basically also my podcast, yeah, it's the Get Confident, Get Happy podcast, which is also a great example of confidence because I started it a long time ago with no goals. So it's just to show you don't wait. To be ready and again just have fun. Oh, celebrate totally. you did something. The worst that can happen, you know. You know, it's funny you said that, Shannon, because I believe that the worst case scenario is often where we are. You know, like sometimes we're afraid of what might happen, but often it's where we are outside of oh. horrible stuff. But um, you know, the worst oh. case scenario is not going after what we really want to do. But this is more in a coaching, um, I guess, uh, personal development like journey um, view. I understand that if it comes to things that can happen in life, it's uh, another topic for another episode. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to ask you something before we leave, because the people who I always, we have on the podcast that are always just so admirable and we just think, oh gosh, like inspiration, you're very inspirational. But I also like to find uh, maybe some relatability for people who are like, well, gosh, then she's just happy all the time. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing you have moments that you are, you, you might still work on your self-confidence. Can you, can you just give us a little bit of that? Like, do you, do you, I'm assuming you can recognize, I mean, you still have moments like that, right? For sure. And the problem is that when I have them, I'm like using it against myself. Like I'm like, but I'm a coach. I should know better. And you know, I ah. catch myself, but I believe this thought, but I know I should not believe, but then I'm already in my story. So no, no, one million percent, because I still have a human brain that is yeah. <laughs> wired for survival. So I will still beat myself up. And if, for example, you know, a client is not like resigning everything, I will make it mean something mm. about myself when I know better. <laughs> but, uh, and very often I need, you know, even like continuing to build my business as I shared before, I want to have, you know, a place for people, uh, you know, because I'm learning American Sign Language and I'm using it so much to, to beat myself up. So I'm trying to remind myself, make sure again, use it as an opportunity to love yourself and not to beat yourself up. Yeah. And make it fun because I make it very serious. So no, no, one every day, every day I need to come back. And also I believe, you know, we actually, this is getting too long, but 50% of the time in life, we do have negative emotions because of this negative bias. Uh, but very often without being aware of it, we overeat, we overdrink because we want to cover this. We sh think we should feel happy all the time. We have everything to be happy. This every day I have to tell myself, okay, it's okay. I have a negative emotion. It's going to pass. But and I'm teaching, I'm making money from this, and I'm still the yeah. getting cut by it. So just to tell you, one million percent for sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right. <laughs> we just want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good, but I'm probably gonna cry in the next few hours. But I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you're normal then. You're just yeah. normal. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, Tamara, thank you so much for being with us. And we're going to, like I said, we're going to link all this down in the show notes. And um, this was just a pleasure. I just Thank you loved so much. It. Did you have fun, guys? I had fun. Uh, I, had a, I had a blast. Yeah. I, it I, was a topic yeah. that I thought would be like pretty heavy, but this is, this has been fun. I love it. It could be, but you put a fun spin That's on right. it. That's right. We had just, a, yeah, <laughs> lighthearted right. spin. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Really, I'm really, really, really excited. Like, it, uh, I mean, I was, yeah, I'm still, but like, I'm honored. <laughs> so, thank you so much. Really, from the bottom of my heart, from Switzerland to the US. Oh, thank you. Thank you.